Hey everyone, this is Dave from the Adobe Character Animator team. And in this video, I'm gonna go through your YouTube questions in your comments. Uh, you all ask a lot of great questions, but they're kind of buried in the comments. And I think there's a lot of great points and features that I wanna talk about here and kind of shine a spotlight on. So I'm gonna walk through uh, several of them. If this is a helpful thing, maybe I'll make more of these in the future. But let's go ahead and start with Star to Model, who said, I saved as a new name and now in character animation, no layers appear. It is is now saved with .ai, how can I revert back and keep design or do I have to redo everything? Uh, no, you don't have to redo everything. The basic question here is about linking your original Photoshop or Illustrator file. Let's say you make an edit to that original Photoshop or Illustrator file and then something doesn't feel like it's connecting right. How do you fix that? Well, every character here in Character Animator, you've got in your project panel over here, your scenes and your um, puppets. And so if I find this character, Tasty, I can select that character and if I go over here, on the blue link that shows up under my puppet, that is the actual file that is being linked, PSD or AI file. So there's a chance that you saved a copy or you saved somewhere else, and this is not the correct file that you need to uh, point to. So all you have to do to point to the correct file is just click on this blue link, and that should bring up your finder or explorer window where you can then select the exact correct location of the thing that you want to use. Go ahead and click replace. And then that will show up as your new puppet location. Now note that if you have a lot of structural changes, if uh, things have been renamed, groups and layers and things like that, you might lose some rigging in rig mode. Um, but if things are generally the same, it should hopefully sync up correctly. Next up, we have a question from Yul Run, who's asking, what are your export possibilities for your creations? Can you export as a sprite sheet or a GIF? So you can't directly do a sprite sheet, although with a little manual uh, work, you could probably do it. And if I had a recording here, what I could do is go to File, Export, and then go to PNG Sequence and Wave. This is gonna make a PNG file with transparency for every frame of my animation. And then I could take those key moments from my animation and put them on a sprite sheet in something like Photoshop or whatever um, you're using. So a bit of a manual process, but that is a possibility. Now for a GIF, yes, that is something you can do. You could go to File, Export, Video via Adobe Media Encoder. This save uh, dialog will come up. You can name it whatever you want. Don't worry about the format yet. We're gonna get to that in the next step. Go ahead and click save. And that's gonna open up Adobe Media Encoder, which is basically just a list of things you want to render out into video. But you have a lot more options here. So if I click on the H.264 right here, now I get a bunch of additional options of how I wanna format my video. And that includes up here, this very first one, one of those is an animated GIF. And so I can do this and I even if I have transparency, if I didn't have a background, I could make a GIF with transparency to make like some sort of sticker or something like that if I wanted to do that. So you have a lot of options. You can of course really dig into these options um, if you wanted to in terms of frame rate and resolution and all that stuff. But this is how I would go about creating a GIF. Next question comes to us from DZ James Official. Oh, I'm glad this is the official DZ James account because I've been following the unofficial one and that they're not really asking great questions. Uh, how do you structure hands triggers using Photoshop with the layers? So this is a classic trigger swap set. Um, this is how you would set up any sort of thing that you wanna swap one thing in for the next. And hands are really um, common way of doing this where you have like, you want your hand to be this way or this way or thumbs up or a peace sign or whatever. So Chloe here, she is rigged in a way where inside her arm group, I have a group called right hand and it has three different states in it, flip, default, and point. Let's look at this in the original Photoshop file um, by selecting my character and then clicking the PS icon down here. All right, so here in my hand group, by default, I've only got default showing, but if I turned on flip and point, uh, all three of these are now showing up at the same time. And if I change the visibility on any of these, you could see they all kind of line up. And all these are, are just like these extra layers that I added in here and put behind the arm to give it this effect of, you know, kind of connecting and looking like they're all part of one piece. So now to rig this correctly in Character Animator, I would just take this group, right hand, drag it in to the triggers panel over here, and I want to create a swap set. 
Now, I've already made one of these before, but just to show you, uh, whatever one of these has the highlighted finger, that's gonna be my default that shows up. And then any of these others, I can select and just put you know, a number here to say, or a letter or whatever, to say this is what I want to do when I tap the one key or the two key, I want it to switch to a flip or a point. And I probably wanna select these and make them both latched as well, which means I just have to tap the key once instead of having to hold it down. And so that's all there is to it. And now when I press, you know, one, two, three, four, any of these, the character is going to change their hand position. And I could have, you know, a hundred of these if I wanted to. We've seen people in several of our example puppets that have like, you know, one, two, three, four, uh, a point, flip, a fist, all sorts of different things. And when your character has all these different emotions and hands, that can really add a lot to the expressiveness. So start really basic with just a hand flip is probably the, the most uh, critical thing for your character. But other than that, you know, play around with it and see what you can come up with. All right, this next question comes from Magenta Pink 4828 I was wondering if you wanna make a puppet have body turning, should that be done with auto swap or is there an actual way to do it? Yeah, the best way to do body turns would be the head and body turner behavior. Um, this character is an example character, Nia, on the uh, character puppet's website. And there's this head and body turner uh, behavior that has been added to her. Now, by default, she's set up to body rotation. So that would require full body motion tracking. So if I've got this little symbol, uh, if the character is enabled for body motion tracking, and then I turn my body, the character is going to turn as well. Um, you can also set this though, if that character doesn't have that, to just head rotation. And now when I turn my head, the character is going to turn as well. The problem with doing this sort of thing and having the whole body move with this is it can be kind of finicky sometimes. I mean, you can play around with the sensitivity here and try to turn that down so it does, you don't have to turn your head as much. But I like having a little bit more control over my body turns personally. And so I would probably just set it up as a swap set, just like I was just showing with the hands, you could set up all three of these positions to be, you know, when I press the one key or two key, switch to this body um, and, you know, turn and all that stuff. So if I dig into seeing how she set up uh, here in rig mode, I can see right quarter view looks like this, left quarter view looks like this, and front view looks like this. And inside, each of them are an instance of a head and a body, right? And so what I could do is, she already has a trigger set like this, I'm just gonna delete it just to show how I would do this, is I would drag this as a new swap set and then say, okay, I want my front maybe to be my default and then let's latch the two of these and we'll set these to one and two and then we can go back to record mode and then I probably wanna turn head and body turner off for this and then when I press one, she's gonna turn one way, two, she's gonna turn the other way and press it again and she goes back to front. And that gives me a little bit more precision. So I'm not, uh, you know, with the camera, you can always run into things where you're accidentally moving and this is gonna be a little bit more foolproof. So that would be my recommended way to do body turns. Next question from Gut of Mind Animation. I played with this the other day. Amazing leaps for animation. Next steps is to let us import our characters to express, we hear you, or give character animator the animate to audio feature. He, this person is talking about the uh, web-based version, animate from audio, the free express tool versus the desktop version. By the way, do you already have a video or can do a tutorial on how to execute a similar process to this feature in Character Animator? Well, unfortunately, there's no one button push thing that you can do in Character Animator desktop right now to say, do that automatic animation from audio. That being said, if you rig your character a certain way, you can pretty much get something that kind of will run by itself. So I'll show you what I mean. This character I got from the Puppet Maker uh, tool and under triggers here, you'll notice the way that this character is set up, they have a bunch of pose triggers right here. And so a bunch of these are in the controls panel. So it's just a bunch of things that I could switch between that are all in the same basic triggered swap set, right? We're talking about swap sets a lot. These are kind of the bread and butter of uh, creating a compelling character here in Character Animator. So let's say I just recorded something, I'm recording right now, and I do a bunch of triggers as my character is talking, and I slightly move my head, and I move between these, and you know that sort of thing, and just try a few of these with my eye movements, with my lip sync, all of that stuff. 
So if I look at my timeline down here, I've got my basic head movements, eye movements, all of that stuff, and uh, all these triggered poses. And so what I can do is, you know, retime these if I need to add some gaps between them or make them longer or shorter or be able to adjust them. So if this character wasn't really angry here, I can just right click it and every single pose that uh, is ready for that character shows up here because they were all in that same swap set. And this swap set includes a lot of things, right? It's in, these triggers include like the eyelids, the eyebrows, the arm movements, the mouth being happy or sad, all of those packed in to make these poses really powerful to move between. So if instead I want the character to, you know, dance instead, I could change it to dance. And now I've got a dancing uh, pencil here moving around and doing exactly what I want. So this makes it really easy to do this. And then for things like the head movement and eye movement, you know, I could just copy these, right? So for the, you know, the face, I could just, you know, copy this and I just pressed Command D on Mac or Control D on Windows and then move this over a little bit and then blend it. And now I've got an extended head take that's continuing to move around. And so I can just keep repeating this pattern for the eyes and the triggers and all of that. And even if I just record for 30 seconds, I can just extend this and customize it to get a really compelling performance. It's very similar to the automatic uh, animation from audio on Express, but at the same time gives me a little bit of extra control. And that's kind of what I would expect from the pro you know, desktop app, the ability to do that. So if you're going for that type of look uh, that you see in Express, this is the way that I would tackle that. This next one's a very specific question, but I thought it was helpful. Uh, is there a way you can make Seer touch his face with his right hand? Crank Waved is asking. So the Seer example character, which is available on okSamurai.com slash puppets, um, this character has all their poses kind of baked in by default. So if I'm moving my arms or try to drag them here, it doesn't work because the character's triggers are set up to have the poses with a default of the hands on the hips. And then if I do different things like, you know, this or that, um, the character will move between these different poses. However, this character also has a manual override, which basically is a blank trigger that allows me to take that uh, those controls, override them, and instead be able to drag them. So with Sears right hand now, if I wanted to touch his face, I would just move up like this. Now, remember layer order is important. So this layer is actually behind the character's head in the original Photoshop file. So if I wanted it to show up in front, I would need that layer to be in front of the character, uh, you know, above the head group in the actual Photoshop file. But that's how you do it. Uh, anytime you feel like your character's stuck, look at their triggers and see what's possible. So if I turn the hips off, for example, um, now I should have full manual control over this because that trigger wasn't set as a default. But if I set it to a default again, now I can't drag because that trigger is taking over everything. All right, next question comes from Totlin Moengay says, hi Dave, for the large pupils character, why do we need to put blink inside a lid group? Can we just put them directly under the eye group? So he's talking about the intro to eye rigging uh, tutorial, and this is the example file that's part of that. And you'll see this blue one right here, large pupils. You'll see as I blink, I kind of have this multi-frame blink animation that's happening over top of things. And if we go into the examples here, I can see that the left eye and right eye group both have these lid groups inside of them, and I put the blinks inside there. So the question is, well, why do you have to put it in this own group? It's by itself. Why can't you just like put it on the outside instead? And the problem is, actually I can show this, let's take blinks off of these two layers. So I'm gonna take the left blink and the right blink off, and instead I'm going to put it on the lid group. Okay, so let's just try this, lid group and lid group. Okay, so now let's go back to record. So check out what's happening. With the blue character, when I blink, Notice that the eyes, the pupils, and the eyeballs are completely disappearing. That's because blink is kind of a weird one, right? So anything that's tagged blink is going to look for other things at its same level and make it disappear. So a lot of times we might just, instead of this lid, it might just be like a straight line or something like that. And we want that to completely uh, you know, take over. We don't wanna see the pupil and the eyeball at the same time. We just wanna see that line. And that's kind of the use case that a character animator is best suited towards. 
But if you want something like this, where you've got some, uh, you know, something that shows up over top of your eyes, you would want to put it in its own group. And that way, if this is what's actually happening, well, there's nothing else at this same level. And so it's not going to make anything disappear. The pupils and the eyeballs will stay in the same place. And that's why you would do something like that. Okay, the last one for this installment is from Sophia Animations, who writes, Hi Dave, I'm back with another question. It's hard to find anything outside of you that is helpful about Character Animator, and I appreciate you answering the questions I have. I have made a realistic looking rig with a forearm and bicep muscle. The only problem is how the elbow hinges warps the design. Is there a way to use limb IK with an elbow hinge? I'd love for it to move just how the shoulder moves. Please let me know if you've run into this or if there's a solution. Thank you so much. So you used to not be able to do this, right? A lot of basic uh, characters in Character Animator, the arm is just one piece of artwork, one layer, and then you just bend that, and basically it's warping that, you know, like as if it was a piece of, you know, rubber. Uh, it's just kind of warping it and moving around. And for a lot of characters, that's gonna work great. But sometimes you want, might want a little bit more control and fidelity. So I mocked up this character really quick as a quick rig example to show you a slightly different treatment. So this character actually has separate uh, bicep and forearm areas. And you see, I'm able to move it around and give the forearm its own uh, kind of movement and hinging down here instead of bending it. So let's jump into rig mode and see how this was made. All right, so let's take a look. So here in my body uh, group, I have added the right shoulder here. I've tagged uh, a blank little handle here as right shoulder. Inside that, I have an independent group called arm that includes the bicep uh, area, basically. And I've moved the origin to where it connects to the body, just like any arm rig. And then I've made a new handle down here that I've tagged as elbow and added a stick. But if I go into that arm group, now, so I have the bicep artwork here, and now I have another independent group inside that called four. And that's my forearm, and it didn't need to be named like that. There's no tagging for that, I just did it. It is also independent, and I have moved the origin to connect with the bicep, and very importantly, I have set the attach style up here to hinge, and that's gonna give you that hinge effect. If you did weld uh, or free, you're gonna get slightly different results. And then at the end of this, on this group, I just made another handle that's called right wrist and draggable. So yeah, that is the way to get this sort of approach. It still will work with limb IK. You'll notice as I'm stretching it and the elbow is bending, it is still working as expected. Um, so it's just another way to rig. I haven't shown this in any tutorials. It's actually just something I figured out maybe like eight, nine months ago, something like that, just kind of playing around with the tools. And that's Character Animator for you. There's probably a way to do the things you want to do. You might just have to experiment with a little trial and error here and there. All right, so that's it for this installment. I hope that was helpful and uh, that you learned a few tips and tricks along the way. Um, if you have things you've made with Character Animator that you would love myself and the rest of the team to see, please use hashtag Character Animator when sharing it on social media. And then if you do run into any problems, any problems with the things I've shown here or anything else in Character Animator, the best place to get immediate help is gonna be the official Character Animator forums. All right, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching and have fun.